some swing voter. Mm. I vote for the candidate, mm -hmm. not the party. Right. And Hillary was not the one. Yeah. So, um, do you mind? Because we're we're just interested in hearing different people's stories. Do you mind my asking? Did you who did you vote for for this this past presidential election? I voted for Trump. If you voted for Trump. There's a confirmation bias out there within the worlds of politics that persuasion is not worth it, but I think the vast majority of people are decent human beings and care about other human beings. And I feel like if we can't figure out how to build a commonality around that, how are we ever going to build a better political future for ourselves? world of facts, opinions, or arguments, it's probably not going to work. And you've derailed the whole project. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to work really hard today on learning how do we stay in this relational space, right? Being empathetic <laughs> and respectful, right? Genuine curiosity, right? As opposed to coming at it with facts and opinions. Now, where do you think Democrats spend most of the time? Exactly. <laughs> if you can respond with a respectful conversation, right, a respectful attitude, I have seen, we have seen people's blood in their face, the tension that you can actually see sort of lighting up, it begins to relax a little bit. What works in these conversations is being genuine. The first thing we do is we build rapport. Is there a story I can tell about somebody who's important to me? When I think about voting now, I'm really thinking about both my parents. And over the course of this last year, um, one of them has had a, my father's had a recurrence of lymphoma. Mm -hmm. He had been in remission and my mother was diagnosed with lymphoma. I knew that he was a veteran, but he never wanted to talk about his war experiences at all. Um, he was just my poppy, his name was Leon, he would play cards with us, and he was really, really smart. I took her to a lot of doctor's appointments, you know, she it's relying on Medicare now. Right, right. And, um, you know, it was kind of phenomenal to me to begin to understand what that meant. He made this huge sacrifice, and that it made the world a safer place. So, in this respect, the way Trump is in the world is actually scary. I really feel that we need some checks and balances on him. Do you yes. feel that? Yes, I do. I do. I do. I do. Yes. Remember, the words that are going to convince people to change their mind are the words coming out of their own mouth. The real key is listening. The real key is getting them talking. Do you ever think about the people close to you when you vote? What you eat. He got in trouble, and I saw him the day he got out. And he came over and he hugged me and he said, Jason, did you learn a lesson? And he looked at me, not the lesson you wanted me to learn. But it was like, oh, I was so sad. What pulls me in the Democratic direction is that the Democratic Party tends to be thinking about how do we get to those kids who, if we help them, will do better. We know we're not going to get to them. We know we can't solve every problem. But if you cut them all off, they're all going to end up in jail or wherever. And this Trump Republicanism is like tough luck. Either you're on the top or you, you're, you lose. Yeah. yeah. Go sink. Yeah. On a scale of zero to ten, what number would you give yourself? I'm a ten from the X rows. Yeah. Push comes to shove. Will these people who became more likely in the conversation will they actually vote Democrat? Will there be enough of them to flip the seat? That's sort of the big question right now. Tonight, we won. first midterm election when Staten Island has gone Democratic in 40 years. 
if we can actually prove that the net effect of our work has helped tip the balance, then I feel like we have invented a new light bulb.